A good friend of mine, Joe Langston, who anchored the news here for 25 years, gave me some advice one time that if you're ever faced with a pronunciation of a name you're not sure with, sure of, pronounce it loudly and with authority, and everyone will assume that you know the correct pronunciation. Take it or leave it with that advice. Joe's the same one who advised me when I switched from doing the weather on television to being a news anchor. I asked him for advice, and he said, it's really simple. He said, the key to being a good news anchor is sincerity. And once you learn to fake that, it's really not hard at all. <laughs> Many of you are familiar with the voice of our next reader. Bob Friedman is a talk show host and also the operations manager at WJLD Radio here. He will be reading Eugene Portier's The International. I, uh, I graduated high school in 1960 in New York. I hated history in junior high school. I hated history in high school. I hated history in college. And it wasn't until I learned that history was not simply the dates and the presidents in order, but that it was what we produce every day. It's a human product. And that connected me a little more to this abstract subject. Uh, the poem I've chosen is called The International. From 1917 to 1944, it was the national anthem of the Soviet Union. But it was written in 1871. So what happened? Why did it take so long to sink in? Well, it's certainly the case that anthems emerge when human spirit soars and people feel hope again. Uh, that's where our anthem came from, where most anthems come from. In 1871, the people of Paris rose up in the middle of the Franco-Prussian War and seized control of the city of Paris. They were in opposition to the government of France. They were in opposition to Bismarck, the Prussian general, Germany had not yet consolidated. They held the city for two months. They got rid of pawn shops, stopped evictions, initiated separation of church and state, many other things. Returned the tools to the artisans and the workers who had to give them up in order to get bread from their own government. In the midst of all this, Eugene Poitier, in the midst of cannons from Bismarck, that had surrounded Paris. How many people have been to Paris here? Just out of curiosity, a few people here? Yeah. Lovely place, beautiful city. Here was this man, Eugene Poitier, who had been condemned to death in absentia. He had, left, he had left to London. In the midst of the cannon saying, debout les dames de la terre, debout les forcats de la femme, la raison tonne en son cratère, cette l'éruption de la fin, du passé fait son table rasa, foulé esclave, debout, debout. Le monde veut changer de bossé, nous ne sommes rien, soyons tout. C'est la lutte finale, coupons-nous et demain, la internationale. And what he was saying in English was, Arise the damned of the earth. Arise prisoners of hunger. Reason thunders in its crater. Tis the eruption of the end. Let's make a clean slate of the past. Enslaved mass, arise, arise. The world's foundation will change. We are nothing. Now let's be all. Tis the final conflict, let us, let us unite, and tomorrow the international will be the human race. Well, it took 17 years for someone to put music to that. And then another decade or two, and this is the strange part of it, for the person who applied the music, Pierre de Gaetier, to actually win the fight for the copyright to the international, which in some ways is kind of contradictory to the whole concept of 
be attached. But this song has been translated into almost every language on earth. The children in Tiananmen Square sang it in front of the tanks, and the most moving version that I've heard was my mother singing it to me in hung Hungarian, remembering the Hungarian Revolution of 1919 that failed. And this is late in my life, and my goodness, where is this coming from? But she sang it, and it goes like this in English. Arise, ye prisoners of starvation. Arise, ye wretched of the earth. For justice thunders condemnation. A better world's in birth. No more traditions chain shall bind us. Arise, ye slaves, no more in thrall. The earth shall rise on new foundations. We have been naught, we shall be all. We want no condescending saviors to rule us from their judgment hall. We workers ask not for their favors. Let us consult for all to make the thief disgorge his booty to free the spirit from itself. We must ourselves decide our duty. We must decide and do it well. Tis the final conflict. Let each stand his place. The international working class shall be the human race. Tis the final conflict. Let each stand his place. The international working class shall be the human race. If you want to learn more about the Paris Commune and what created this man's vision, you can read Al Alistair Horne's The Fall of Paris or, believe it or not, Karl Marx was a stringer for the New York Telegram and covered the Civil War in France. Thank you. And that from someone who hated history. Very well done. Thank you. I'll come back someday and talk about algebra too. That was, that was very interesting, Bob. Thank you. <laughs>